Hi guys, my name's iBlastoff and first off I want to apologise for not being able to play that full epic intro. Unfortunately I do have to talk at some point, but um, yeah, god I love that intro, it's so good. But uh, okay, so getting into this, I'm going to do a green run transit early rounds or starting round strategy. Just to uh, give you guys a little bit of a playthrough. So I'm going to be doing rounds 1 through to 25 or maybe 20. Depends, I haven't decided yet, but this is going to be just round one and what I usually do in order to get up to higher rounds. Just to give you guys some tips and, I don't know, talk to you guys for a bit and see what's going on. But yeah, as you can see, as I talked about in my previous strategy on Nuketown Zombies for the early rounds, I always shoot the zombies in the legs, so I get 80 points and then you get the knife to give you 130 to obviously maximise your points in the first room. Now you actually start off with 10 zombies on transit as opposed to 6 which is usually the case in the first round on all the other maps but you start off with 4 zombies in the room anyway and then 6 come through so you can easily get around 2000 points straight off the bat. So um, I'm just knifing a few to save my ammunition anyway but I'm going to leave 2 alive for this um, starting bit just so I can go and buy all the perks that we need and basically set ourselves up and then um, this will basically be the whole video. I think it's around 11 minutes so... You get to listen to me for 11 minutes, wow. Can I talk for 11 minutes to myself? Hmm, who knows. But, um, so yeah, what you can see there, I, um, I'm just going to do up one of the windows. On the first round, you can only get 80 points from the windows, just from round one. And uh, so you can see me, might as well maximise my points there. I'm going to sort of like line these zombies up, just so I can get a bit of some collateral damage. Or maybe they are the last two, actually. Um... Well, 1970 is more than en enough points that we'd need, and I'd probably knife a zombie at a later date. So yeah, what you want to do, leave two zombies alive just in case one dies, but the reason one actually dies when it's left on its own is either it's taken too much damage, and it's kind of like bled out, or it's because it hasn't hit you in a certain amount of time. So if you do have one zombie, just make sure you let him hit you just like once every four minutes or something, just in case he doesn't die. It's a really good tip. Um, that probably not a lot of people really know because that's the reason they die is if they don't sort of get a hit on you so they die but yeah um i leave two zombies alive anyway just because they're slow and it doesn't really make any difference to me and it's just a little bit safer so you want to build the turbine and then you want to come outside and obviously i put that part on the bus and um, what i do in this strategy is build the bus as well and just sort of build all the buildables like the turret and everything like that but what you want to do is put a lamppost down put a lamppost down put a turbine down under the first lamppost and then go ahead and get a denizen and walk it under the light just so we can try and teleport to the bank because what i did is i set up myself with a previous game where i just maximized as many points as possible out of around 20 rounds and then obviously committed suicide and made sure i put all that money in the bank so i can use it for this game so that's just every time you want to get in a mindset of maybe every 40k or 20k you want to go to the bank and deposit it just in case you get downed i do it all the time i mean it only takes 10 minutes out of your sort of game just to go and deposit that money you could even go and put a pack a punch weapon in the fridge as well which i also did and you can see the easter egg still running there i seem to have sided with maxis which is kind of annoying i've i've been i've done the maxis about um 10 days ago now and i just haven't done the rick's one again even though because I saw a tweet about commitment to one of the sides and I think I will stick with Richterfen because I just prefer him as a character so um, it's all about that commitment you've got to stop doing both easter eggs and just stick with one choose a side but as you can see I'm using this teleport to try and get to the town just to withdraw that money but I keep getting teleported elsewhere and you will this will happen to you should I say and you just got to keep keep doing it until um, you actually reach the town you could alternatively run there but I don't know just Doing the teleporters and fighting your luck's pretty fun. So I'm just going to lure this zombie away from that lamppost right there because I don't don't want him to destroy my turbine and just have to go back and pick another one up from the depot. And it would have been I might as well have just got on the bus. So it's kind of long, but um, yeah, I'm going to get these two away from the lamppost just in case they destroy it. Um, I could go ahead and just knife him, like I said, but I didn't. So um, that's basically where we're at so far. As you can see, I picked up Quick Revive from the depot. It's very important on solo. Um, I mean, you can run without it, but as soon as you're downed, I mean, you don't get back up. So <laughs> on solo, you've got no one to help you. So Quick Revive is pretty important. That and Jug are the most important perks, as you would know in solo. So yeah, as you can see, this is probably one of the hardest ones to get the Denizen to come on because 
from the fog to the lamppost, it's a little bit of a run. I guess it's probably the longest one. It's not too hard, obviously. You just have to wait for them to make that sound. And then, um, yeah, be sure to knife them in between because if you haven't got Jug, you will go down after two consecutive strikes by Denizen. So if you knife them in between strikes, it kind of like prevents that from happening. So yeah, that's pretty good. But I get lucky and I finally make it to the town. And we're going to use our 1,000 points to open this door. And I'm going to blow up the um, vault door right there just to get our money out. It's also worth considering opening the other vault door just in case we want to pack a punch a weapon at a later date and there's a horde of zombies chasing us. So we're just really preparing ourselves for these higher rounds and not, um, what's it, not really like leaving any options open to uh, weakness. You could get stuck there and whatever. But I'm going to withdraw around 20k, I think, just because you don't really need to take out too much because you could down, get downed or something. Just take out enough to get you where you want to go. So. I don't actually choose to get stamina up in this um, strategy, which you can, I mean, but I just prefer double tap so much more and uh, speed cola. So I'd usually go for either speed cola or stamina up there, the two I swap out, but double tap, jug, and quick revive are my uh, go to perks for solo. So as you can see, I'm using my turbine here to buy jug, but it doesn't actually pop up, and I'm, I was usually used to seeing it pop up, so I kind of changed my mind and think, I was like, where's my jug? It didn't even pop up as a, like, a redundant perk. Usually it pops up and it's kind of like um, opaque to let you know that you haven't got the full effects of it. So I just put my turbine down again to just try and get that full effect back. And as you can see, it's appeared now, even though it's opaque, but that's all good. So I'm going to run now to the power and turn that on. You can turn the power on first, then buy jug. It's just up to you. It's no real order. As long as you get all of them before you start the actual round two, then you'll be all good. So I'm going to quickly skip this video now and just show you me turning on the power, but I'm going to speed it up because it just saves time on the video. And uh, yeah, you can see me running through here, da da da, skipped it, so I'm now at the power room, just going to build the power. And uh, a lot of people say, oh yeah, don't let the zombie die, but the zombies don't actually die when you turn the power, they just respawn, especially in these early rounds, so it's not too much of an issue. Um, and I've also just skipped it here. So what I did from there, I ran to the farm and I'm going to pick up some claymores because they're very, very, very useful to our plight against the zombies. And um, they've just got really good explosive damage and I kind of create like little claymore traps so, so I can run trains around and just sort of like take them out if I'm in trouble. Or if you get downed and you haven't got jug, you can always sort of like get rid of a horde that's chasing you just by using claymore. So it's really useful to get claymores in the early rounds. And as you can see, I pick up my pack a punch Galil from the fridge here that I put there on um, my previous game before this one. So I go ahead and buy double tap as well. And like I said, I build pretty much all of the things I can build apart from the jet gun. I built um, the turret there. I go back to the diner now. I think I teleported there and um, end up at the diner, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and buy Galva Knuckles as well, but I've got to go to the town and pick up the other part. So I've built the bus. I've built, um, I think I'm going to build the shield now, but I'm also thinking, right, you know what, if I've got to go back here to the town, I might as well pack a punch, um, the Mustang and Sally's. So, as I did a previous video of how to pack a punch really easily without the door closing on you, I just dropped it down, hopped back onto the bus, and as you can see, I've sped it up, and you make it every single time, like I said in my previous video, and I go ahead and get the Mustang and Sally's, which are really, really good. If you didn't know, of course everyone knows the Mustang and Sally's are amazing. And they're obviously an explosive weapon which will help you to get um, rid of hordes. But you do get a lot of crawlers in the later rounds and they kind of become a bit annoying. But regardless, I... Um, <laughs> so what I did, I go back to the, the uh, diner and I build the shield. And I think I hit the box as well. Just because you kind of want to get monkey bombs or EMPs. Preferably monkey bombs, but if you've got Galva Knuckles that eat... Your EMPs kind of like you can it's a toss up. Either you have Galvan knuckles and no EMPs, or you have EMPs and no Galvan knuckles. But I'd always suggest trying to get monkey bombs because they always get you out of danger. Or if you get downed, you can distract them while you go off and get some other perks. So I hit the box, and little behold, you can see the swirling light from the Easter egg there. Could it be the next step? I'm not going to go into it in this video, but I get monkey bombs on my first box hit, which was just awesome. I just got extremely lucky. And then I teleported and I went and bought, um, picked up the hatch and bought the Galva Knuckles. So from here I thought, you know what, I'm just going to uh, try and hit the box one more time. Don't know why, I had two pack a punch weapons and uh, I didn't really know what I needed from it. But I got a ray gun on my second hit, so I thought I'd show that to you as well. Just to show how lucky I was in this game. So I've got all four perks, Galva Knuckles, I've got the shield built, I've got... Um, 
all the other things that we need. And this is pretty much the end of the first part, guys. So if this can get to 25 likes, I will upload the next part as soon as possible and we can get into it. So I'll see you in the next part.